Good day, everyone. My name is Zhu Qingchang, and I'm a student from the Department of Foreign Language and Literature in National Zhaozhong University, NCTU. And my project today is about progressive and regressive stress shifts in L2. In my introduction, there are three parts. The first one is my motivation. What motivates me on this topic is a little story from my interpretation class. One class may pronounce the word democracy as democracy, and she was instantly corrected by another classmate. This interests me because when the word is a noun, democracy, the stress is on the second syllable. But when it comes to the adjective, it is pronounced as democratic, and the stress is on the third syllable. Therefore, I want to investigate the L2 English learner production in stress shift. L2 means people learning English as a second language. Then is my literature review. Pro progressive stress shift means shifting the stress to the next syllable. And regressive stress shift means shifting the stress to the stronger syllable. For example, the word magic, the stress is on the first syllable. But the w another word, magician, the stress shifts to the second syllable, gist. So this is progressive stress shift. And the second point in my literature review is that in my later on presentation, I abbreviated neutral suffixes as N, non-neutral suffixes as NN. And I want to discover how uh, the L2 learners stress placement in different situations. The last part in my introduction is my goal. My goal is to investigate the accuracy rate of both progressive and regressive stress shifts. And also investigate the stress acquisition. Which means to understand how the participants act in the production. Which kind of the stress shift are the participants more likely to pronounce. Then, here comes my methodology. My participants are six 20-year-old NCTU students. Two of them are males, four of them are females. Next is my procedure. My procedure is first, recording the participants' productions in my experiment. Second, analyzing the rating. Third, asking them to fill a questionnaire for me. The questionnaire is about their English learning background. There are seven questions in the questionnaire. First, their major. Second, their KK or IPA learning, which means to understand whether they are able to read the pronunciation symbol. Third, the years they have been learning English. Fourth, English education from native speakers, to know whether they have received any education from native speakers. Fifth, certificate. To know whether they have any English proficiency official 
such as a cake. Six. The hours they use in which per week in their daily life. Seven. Their parents' language ability. Because their parents' language ability may influence the participant's pronunciation accuracy. The last part is my summary. There are thirty words in my summary, and these thirty words are randomized with two repetitions in the experiment. Also classified into different groups, they are divided into two parts, A and B. For chart A is the progressive stress shift word, and for chart B is the regressive stress shift word. In these thirty words, they are also Divided into ten word sets. One word set includes the base, the neutral suffix, and the non-neutral suffix. So there are in total ten word sets. And these are the word lists I use in chart A. And this is the word list of chart B, the regressive ones. And I cover the methodology. Here comes the result. And this is the omnibus result and the average、um, accuracy rate my participant got. And to see the progressive and regressive, we have to see the N N part. N means non-neutral, which is the stress shift, and we can see A is higher than B, and progressive ones are higher than regressive ones. And and then looking deeper from the、uh, result of each participant, chart A mostly match the overall result. From the last slide. However, in chart B, only half of the participants' accuracy flow match the omnibus. And from all of my results, I discover something very interesting. That is, the frequency of the word may have positive correspondence to the accuracy rate. This. Is the flow of chart A. The blue lines are accuracy, and the red bars are the frequency of the word. From this graph, we can see that the flow of the blue lines match the red bars. However, in chart B,、uh, the frequency doesn't match the accuracy rate. There are three. Exceptions. To sum up, there are three main points in my discussion. First is the accuracy rate in the stress shift. A is higher than B, which means the progressive accuracy rate is higher than regressive accuracy rate. So. Here comes the second point. We hypothesize the result comes out like this because of the participants' connotation in each word. For the participants, they tend to distinguish a word from the first syllable. For example, confer and conferring. They are based on the same root, and the stress are both on the second syllable. But For conference, although they are from the same root, the stresses are on different syllables. So this is why the participants differ 
conference from confer. Last is the frequency. In my results, I did discover that the frequency seems to have positive correspondence to the accuracy rate. To conclude my presentation, this experiment may contribute to the field of English teaching, and L2 learners can know more about stress when learning English. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your listening.